as we roll out cold storage, cold blood to the country, it is beyond time that we start thinking about the use of fresh whole blood. So we have a strategic preparedness problem that we don't have much blood out there. So we need to start thinking next stage. Um, I have had the opportunity to do fresh whole blood since 2005 on my first deployment where uh, at the hospital we'd run low. I'm AB positive. If we tried doing a type specific um, fresh whole blood drive, Clinicians would run out, dump it into the bag, take it in, and then dump it right into the patient. Okay, so um, in the military, we have these the things called the Elden card. So if I am out and I am not sure uh, what blood type uh, David is, it's a little card that you can do a little finger prick on, take some samples, and put it onto a card, and it will tell you uh, the ABO type. So um, usually we try to pre- um, type and screen the soldiers uh, before they go into theater or in theater, but if that doesn't happen, we do have these little things called Elden cards. They are not approved for use in the U.S. yet. So that's a great tool that you don't need to go into a big lab and have all this complex machinery to run um, these type and screens. So what looks like for you? Over here, Alex is doing typical site prep, cleaning it. Um, I think we have an alcohol swab. So he's doing largely AC is the best place to get this. It's large bore and yeah, blood can so flow right out mm -hmm. much quicker. So he's doing palpating the site, cleaning it, finding a good spot. And because he's a Navy SEAL, he's going to stay cool under pressure with it, all these eyes on. Yeah, the kits do come uh, pre-packaged, yeah. and I'll talk a little bit about the kits while he's, he's finding his site. Um, the kit will come with an IV access kit, so you just drop in uh, an IV tube, excuse me, an IV. Um, and these kits are prepackaged, so it is the almost the exact same blood bags that you would use in, from the blood centers. So in this case, this is a blood bag containing CPD. There's two additives that can go into blood bags, CPD and CPDA1. Clinically, it doesn't matter for you all. What matters is operationally that if you do uh, join together with a blood center, CPD is only good for 21 days. CPDA1 is a 35 day additive. So again, clinically, not a big difference, but as you're planning your programs, it's nice to know you can keep the, the bag a little bit longer. And is that something that you see in the future? Yes, and if, if uh, you all were listening to folks like John Holcomb, who, not the wood, looking at this in some of our smaller rural hospitals first, before we go to some of the, the big trauma centers. Um, I know I've, I've talked with, um, who is it? Uh, it's gonna be a little more challenging, um, but it is possible. The Texas Rangers, um, oh, he's got his IV. We're making. Yep. There we go. So we got All the, right. Did we get the tourniquet to see if we help? Yeah. We help blood flow. All right, so we have started the IV line. Um, I took the donor bag, get on to help flow. We've got it secured. And then uh, it's important to keep the bag low. And I may have put up the gurney a scotch too high. It's all right. Um, so that gravity is our friend and pulls the blood down into the bag. So we are gonna unclamp here and see if we, okay. And see if we have hit other pieces. The bag uh, can stay on the ground. Um, it's not sterile, it's the outside of the bag. So if you are in the dirt and you need to drop it into the dirt, that's what you do. Is set for about that five gram weight. So we want to keep a, a nice distribution of that. Um, there are field expedient methods since um, guys like Alex, when they're out, you know, humping. Right. Them out. Now we got some good flow here. We just had to do a little bit of adjustment. So, yeah. This is going to take a few minutes for the bag to fill, because um, as fascinating it is, is to watch this, it's a bit like watching paint dry for about 10 minutes. 
um, executive location. So if you're an EMS agency and you want to start blood and you don't know who provides blood in your area. We're going to do overhand. He's going to do an overhand knot closest to the bag. Yep, and we're just going to do it three times. So if you're not familiar, um, blood cannot be transfused via your regular IV tubing. Not the same stuff as the saline. It needs to go through uh, tubing that has a filter in there uh, in the event that any clots have formed. So first thing we want to do is make sure that all of our ports are closed by moving our rollers. There's going to be three on this, two at the top of the Y, then one here below the, the bulb. Once you have them all shut and closed, we can go ahead and spike our normal saline bag. Filter so that um, you're not, uh, do you need, you got I'm it. I'm going to hang it right up here, yep. You got it. Oh. Awesome, so we got our bag spiked, and we need to go through the steps and flush our lines. So the first thing we're going to do is going to flush our Y tubing. From here, you're going to op uh, leave this one closed and make sure it's closed. Open up the Y tubing, connect to the normal saline then open up the wide tubing connected to the side. You can go ahead and crack the cap, make sure that fluid is coming out. It is. Go ahead and shut that. Go ahead and shut your normal saline. And from there, if we're going to be using any type of uh, heating device that needs a cartridge, um, if we're going to be plugging into our patient with a 18 gauge hard needle, we're going to go ahead and connect that now so that we only have to do one more flush on this line. So everything's nice, neat, nice and neatly connected. We'll say that it is at this point. We've got the Buddy Light cartridge on. We've got a hard needle. We're going to go ahead and open up the uh, normal saline now, as well as distal flow, and we'll turn it upside down and let it fill up. It's, it's good, it's good. Once all our line is nice and flushed, go ahead and all close this off. Going the correct direction, not this is closed the off. Patient. And this is closed off. EB guidelines that need to be in your protocols. Um, and that is when the medic needs to grab the bag, make sure that it has not expired, that it is within date. If it has a safety view or other uh, temperature mechanism on there to make sure it hasn't gone out of range. The other mandatory element in the guidelines is that there must be a visual inspection of the bag to make sure that there is no breakage, no leakage, no clotting or discoloration. Excellent. So once we identify that, we're going to administer this to our patient. We're then going to come back up to our wide tubing. <clears throat> Again, we can make sure that we run our line. Everything is set the way that we want it to be. And now all we got to do is plug in uh, our blood administered to our patient. So with this, peel it open like a banana, just being extremely careful that you do not touch any of where you're going to insert the uh, wide tubing. It doesn't pop up or twist up like other IV solutions. They may be familiar with the peels back. Hang this at this point, and then if you're going to use a pressure infusion, this would be the time to apply this to your blood bag. And then from here, we just go ahead and open up our blood, leaving our normal saline closed, and we will let it begin flowing to our patient. Now, if we were giving <coughs> our patient uh, fresh whole blood um, from another patient, we're going to run a timer um, the first five, 15 minutes. We're going to look for any adverse reactions to our patient that then push us into, you know, is he going to anaphylaxis? Does he need calcium gluconate now? And uh, different kinds of things that we would push with the blood.